I'd like to welcome everyone. This is Iris Weinstein, Senior Sales Executive here at ISSA. If you, anyone has not talked to me, and maybe I've talked to Michael Gabrielson, we, Michael Gabrielson and I are the sales team here, and we are here to help you and have a very successful experience at ISSA Interclean. Many of you are new exhibitors, and there are some of you who are loyal, long-standing uh, exhibitors to the ISSA Interclean show, so I'd like to welcome you. But I'd also like to uh, welcome Jefferson Davis from Competitive Edge. He is our resident trade show guru, and uh, we've been working together for the past eight-plus years in helping you succeed when you invest time, energy, and dollars to exhibit at our show. So we're going to start now about, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the new exhibitors and why you guys are very important to us. You know, you invest a lot of time, energy, and effort um, and dollars, as I said before, in, um, in coming to our show. Um, and we want to make sure that you guys have the most uh, successful experience. We want you to have the most um, uh, opportunity to get the, the most number of leads, um, and the no, most number of um, opportunities for a sale um, at the end of the show, and then obviously um, several months afterwards. So we invest in you um, to have that ex successful experience. So we have, in our surveys that we have asked our exhibitors, and, or sorry, our attendees, um, is what is very clear to us is that attendees are looking for new products and new services. That's the number one thing that they're looking for when they come to ISSA. Um, and also, um, they're coming to ISSA because um, uh, they're looking for those products and services. And we, we have a first-time exhibitor pavilion for companies like yourself. Um, but oftentimes, exhibitors just want to be either near maybe their competitors or maybe near a front entrance, or they want to be by food service on the show floor. So there isn't necessarily a particular area that is um, that is geared towards uh, those first time and new companies that uh, attendees are going to go to. Um, you are everywhere on the show floor and so we want to help promote you. So we're going to talk about a few of those things of how we're promoting you prior to even getting um, onto the show floor. And then um, new exhibitors are there we have all kinds of uh, new exhibitors this year and every year um, offering different types of products and services, and that's what attendees are looking for. So your guys are growing, you're dynamic, and we want you to succeed. Iris, let's do a quick poll. I'd like to find out who's on the web briefing with us today. We've got a pretty uh, high percentage of our exhibiting companies, so um, I would like everybody on the webinar to take a look. We're going to launch a poll. Tell us about your experience exhibiting at ISSA Interclean. Uh, you could see you'll have um, various options. So maybe it's you and your company's first time. Or maybe your company has been exhibiting, but it's your first time uh, managing it. Or maybe it's another situation where you have been here before through another company, but the company you're with is your first time. Or maybe uh, you and your company have exhibited before. When we did the promotions for the event, uh, we got a lot of feedback from uh, current exhibitors who said they have been exhibiting at the show for several years. And this will kind of help us uh, tailor our content as we uh, work through today's webinar for you. So I'm going to show the results. Uh, so Iris, you can take a peek. We've got a pretty diverse audience here in terms of uh, who's attending. Um, almost half of the audience, it's both the individual and the company's first time. So welcome to the ISSA family, all of you, your first time. The rest of the group is either a combination of where they have been here, either with their existing company or another. And we've got a pretty fair bunch of you who are not new exhibitors at all. So thank you for logging in to today's uh, webinar also. So uh, tell us about the team, uh, Iris, and maybe anything they sure. need to know about who to go to for what. Exactly. So um, Michael, like I said before, Michael and myself, we handle all of the exhibitors, all the exhibit application, 
um, any questions you have about the um, the the tools that we we have for you to set up for the show, like the service manual and registration um, and invoicing. Amelia is our sales coordinator, and she will be able to answer. Again, if we're not available, you can definitely speak with Amelia on any of those questions. Um, and then we have Mandy uh, Hansen, who is um, she's our trade show and meeting senior manager. If you're looking for meeting space or questions about um, items in the service manual, you could also uh, reach out to her as well. All right, uh, this is Jefferson. Um, I want to overview uh, the Exhibitor Success Program. I think many of you um, on this webinar today, you've exhibited at a lot of trade shows over your career. And if you're like me, you probably felt like the only time you heard from the show producer was when they wanted to sell you something or when they sent you that service kit telling you all that stuff you had to do. But ISSA has a philosophy that they don't want to just rent you concrete and, you know, throw that service kit at you and hope that it all works out. What they want to do is be more than somebody just renting space. They want to provide you with a blueprint, a roadmap, a game plan on how to make sure every hour and every dollar that you invest delivers real value for your company. So the centerpiece of our exhibitor program, we call the Exhibitor Success Program. It's a very robust web page loaded with a lot of content. You can access live and replayable webinars. Uh, there's tools and downloadable calculators, which I strongly suggest that you grab a hold of. In fact, I'm, I'm going to take you to the page for just a moment here so you can see it live and point out some of the um, key things here. So you can see we've got three webinars we're recording today and we'll load this. On July 27th, we're gonna do another one, uh, the Exhibitor Services, which is really gonna take you into the logistical operational side of managing uh, your exhibit program. And we've got a replay of building brand awareness and driving qualified booth traffic. If you did not view that prior to last year's show, or even if you did, I would recommend you go back and view it again. This is a big show. The competition for attendees' time is fierce, and you've really got to put together a solid pre and at show marketing campaign. And this webinar, Building Brand Awareness and Driving Qualified Booth Traffic, will walk you through a step by step process on how to do that. These tools and calculators are the, the exact same products that when I do in house training and consulting, Companies pay me uh, over $10,000 uh, for this type of support. You're getting it free from ISSA. So make sure you download the 16-week planning tool, uh, the exhibiting and financial performance metrics, and the exhibitor cost control tool. And I'm gonna talk about the strategic planning exercises in a moment here, uh, but also these educational tips, uh, really how to make your exhibit stand out and take a look at the standout exhibit report we did uh, last year when we were at the show. We walked the entire show floor end to end, and we took photos of booths that rock, and we posted them on this standout exhibit report. And you can see you know, the, the different things that ISSA does as a new exhibitor to make you visible. Because as Iris said, we know that mm -hmm. the attendees really want to see who and what's new. So you're highlighted with a special icon in the directory listing, and you're also mentioned uh, in the on-site signage, and you've got special recognition in the mobile app. And by the way, if you have a uh, new product or a service uh, that you feel is uh, you know, innovative, um, be sure to enter it into the Innovation Award program. You get a special discount on that. That can give you serious, serious recognition within the industry. So let's go back into the program. Uh, what I was talking about here was this page. The key takeaway with this page is to bookmark it, share it with everybody on your team, and be sure to visit it often because we're continually updating the content on the Exhibitor Success Program. Okay centerpiece of, of our new exhibitor onboarding, and listen very carefully here. Uh, there's five critical success factors. If you address these five well, 
you're not only going to win at ISSA Interclean, you'll win at every show you do. And so what we're doing is we've got these up on the Exhibitor Success page, and you'll be receiving those in a solo email at the right time frame as you prepare. Make sure to get your team together and do these exercises. We purposefully designed them to be quick, interactive, and easy, but you got to do them. The first one will be defining your outcomes, you know, and that's going to be moving from reasons to goals, backing them up with written action plans. The second one will be defining your ideal visitor and, and developing your value proposition and your how you're going to get in their mind and on their agenda. The third one will be about managing the visitor experience, which really comes down to your booth, your product demonstration, and your people. The fourth one will be lead management, and the fifth one will be measurement. And again, these are very quick. They're designed to, uh, to guide you through the critical questions and give you the content. Because again, if you do these five things well, you're going to do well. If you neglect or avoid any one or any combination of these success factors, it's going to limit the value you get from the show. So make sure you're aware of these. Make sure you gather your team. Make sure you do them. Okay, the next thing, I have a team of trade show experts, uh, many of which are certified trade show marketers. They carry the, uh, the official designation, the only uh, uh, college-affiliated certification in trade shows. They're going to be at Interclay. And on Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, they will visit your booth and do a 21-point observation, evaluation. The whole idea is not to be critical or judgmental, but the idea is to be a light. We want to put a spotlight on what's working so you can keep doing it. And if we see anything we think that you can change right now on the fly during the show, if you're open to it, we'll point that out to you. And we want to make specific individual personalized recommendations that will help you improve your overall exhibiting effectiveness. This product in and of itself is a $400 evaluation. ISSA is giving you this for free. They're paying the bill essentially. Why? Because they want you to succeed and they want you to be a long-term happy, satisfied exhibitor. Okay, um, I'm going to bring Iris back. She's going to just kind of reinforce some things we think it's important that you keep top of the mind as you prepare and plan for Interclean. Iris? All right, so I have to say Interclean. We are a family of trade shows around the world. Our North America show is an annual show. The Las Vegas, our show this year, this year is in Las Vegas, which is our most well-attended North American show. We do go to other cities. Next year, our, we will be going to Dallas, Texas at the end of October. So we have about 700, over 700 exhibiting companies and 16,000 attendees from 74 countries. So the one thing I would say is unique and exciting as well as challenging about our show is that the entire industry comes together for the, for the week. On the first day, September 11th, we have education that's taking place. And on the September 12th, that's when the trade show actually opens at 10 a.m. in the morning. So we have three days of trade show, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And you're trying to figure out who is, who is it that I'm trying to reach. And the unique thing about our show is that we have everyone from a residential cleaner, commercial cleaner, distributor, wholesaler, manufacturer, and associate all coming to the show. So you're trying to figure out who is your audience that you want to reach out to. And that's it could be challenging as well. So um, we have shows, like I said, around the world, and those shows take place um, in different locations and uh, depending on the year. Um, and I could be more than happy to answer any questions about any of our international shows. So about our attendees, so – about 40, 42, a little bit over 40% of our attendees are distributors and wholesalers. 36 
I would say about 40 to a little over 40% of our, our other attendees are going to be the facility service providers. And the facility service provider is com comprised of residential cleaners. They are comprised of commercial cleaners. And, um, and sometimes it's hard to really um, understand all the details when it comes to the facility service providers, but you can think of it as um, anyone who's a facility manager of a uh, convention center, of a educational uh, school district, um, of a hospital. So those are the type of attendees that are coming to our show. And we have, and those who are coming are going to be the decision makers. As you can see in the slide, you see the executive level or upper management attendees. Over 80% of those who are coming in all of those classifications are uh, decision makers. So keep that in mind. They're going to be the ones, either the decision maker or the influencer. And then um, it's really also important to know the top product categories of interest. Um, when you are going into your exhibitor portal and updating your listing, you have the opportunity to select product categories and those that best define your the type of products that you that you serve. So uh, the information here is telling us when these attendees are coming to the show, those product categories are the ones that they're looking for. And then we dive deep in the primary primary market segments of those attendees that are coming to the show, what what uh, market segments that they're in. Um, so that information information is in there. So you can see distributors, they're mostly 40% are in the commercial space, and then safety, and then education. Uh, building service contractors, again, they're in the commercial space. And then, as I said before, the in-house service providers, those who are coming to the show, 40% are in the education field. Now, I do have to say that our education that we're offering at the show, um, that is also unique about ISSA Interclean because they're not just coming to see the new products and services, but they're also uh, investing in professional development. So that is taking place on the September 11th on that Monday. All right, so what do attendees want? Um, as I said before in our surveys, seeing new products and, and uh, services is the top priority for them. And we have it broken down by distributors, building service contractors, and in-house service providers. And then the next thing would be um, uh, networking for facility service providers, as well as uh, networking, networking, finding new suppliers. Those are very important to attendees. And I do want to tell you that um, attendees on average visit 51 booths. This is from stats from 2016. 51 booths and 35% of those booths were new suppliers. So we have over 700 exhibitors at our show. And the challenge for you is how do you get those attendees to come to your booth? What is it that you're doing to attract them? And Jefferson Davis is going to go over all those details um, as we move forward. Um, but, you know, they, they're planning, you guys should be, or the attendees are planning for the show. They're not just coming in and just, you know, walking the show randomly. They do have, um, they do create uh, planners and schedules. They actually, um, they are scheduling appointments. And they're looking for that face-to-face -face time. And that's where the information and interactions on site um, is important. And then they're also looking for interactive displays and presentations. They want to engage, engage with exhibitors, not just um, see someone um, just sitting at their booth playing on their phone. They really want to he see demonstrations. Um, they're really wanting to, you know, touch and feel and get an idea of the product. So keep that in mind when you're, setting up a, uh, your booth for the show. And as I said before, the attendees are planning ahead. So one of the things that we offer is this My Show Planner for attendees or those who are um, thinking about becoming an attendee. Um, when they go to our website, um, they're going to create a login, and they're going to be able to go in and select education sessions as well as exhibitors to add to their agenda. 
And this is done one to three months prior to the show. So that's why it's super important to, um, to start, you know, updating your profile on our website, um, adding products and, and adding those product categories in there. And as I said, they look forward to hands-on interactive experiences and um, I'm not, there's not as many um, promotions, um, tchotchkes that are given out at our show. It is a benefit and a bonus if you do have those, um, but attendees are looking for um, exhibitors with, you know, substance um, with, and no sizzle. I mean, more substance and, and um, I know that you guys are, this is the first first opportunity for you to, you know, start preparing for the show. So I think our next slide is our top, my top seven suggestions on helping you be successful. So number one, if you have not already done so, check out the Exhibitor Tools webpage. I don't know, Jefferson, do you have a, do you have a link to show everyone about the Exhibitor Tools page? Yeah, that was uh, on on the first uh, that slide where we had your exhibitor success uh, program page up. Yeah, we also have like a tools section, um, and that's basically your exhibitor portal is is your best friend. I mean, that's the first thing that I would go to in helping you prepare for the show. Um, once you get into that portal, there's various tiles that you're going to be able to sift through. Um, and so, you know, make sure you start looking at that now. We had a deadline date of June 15th for the print directory. So make sure that your listing is updated. Um, Pre-show marketing um, as number two. Oh, there is our exhibitor tools page. So this is where we talk about the portal and what you can do in the portal. So back to my suggestion. So um, item number two is pre-show marketing, targeting the right audience. So um, it's very important to prepare for the show and not just show up and expect attendees to come to your booth. Um, I would suggest to make appointments prior to the show. You want to en engage your leads, any leads that you do get from the, from the website or um, from, from however, whatever method you use, you wanna engage them and schedule appointments during the show. Um, you also want to be very strategic in your in your planning process. We have a lot of great sponsorship opportunities available, um, whether it's something you want to promote in the mobile app, if it's a signage opportunity. We have video um, uh, opportunities to promote any videos that you are you know trying to 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 promote to our attendees. So there's a sponsorship page, issa.com/sponsorships. Um, there is a tile in your exhibitor portal that goes directly there. The third thing on my list is the exhibitor service manual. That was actually just launched about two weeks ago. And that is going to be in your exhibitor portal on the main page, there's a tile called exhibitor tools. You're gonna go into exhibitor tools and the first tile on the next screen is the exhibitor service manual. This is where you're gonna to need to order your carpet and your furniture, electric, uh, your shipping handling, all those um, very detailed logistical uh, information will be housed there. And then as Jefferson talked about, we took the online exhibitor success program and tools section. Um, registering your booth staff, that is very important. For every 100 square feet you reserve, you get one complimentary trade show badge, as well as one badge for being an ISSA member. You must redeem your badges by July 31st. Your registration portal, uh, you're gonna go into your exhibitor portal and on the bottom right side, there is a button called uh, Booth Staff Registration. You're gonna go into that section and then you're gonna register your booth staff. After you have used all your complimentary badges, you will, it, it will start charging you $50 per person. Um, and then the sixth thing on the list here is ordering lead retrieval. So we are actually, um, we are gonna have a whole separate uh, webinar on July 27th with a lot of our uh, vendors, um, including our registration company who will be talking specifically about your lead retrieval options. 
we are using a new registration company this year, and there's some really exciting technology that they have for you to capture your leads. And so I highly recommend coming back on on July 27th for that. And of course, if you have any questions about anything I said or anything that you find on our website or in the portal, please reach out to any one of us. Um, you have our email addresses, or you can just email the sales at issa.com. All right, thank you, Iris. Um, everybody who's on the webinar, and Iris, take a look in your uh, chat box, but also all the exhibitors that are on the webinar, it should be a good time to think about any specific questions that have flashed in your mind about your exhibit at ISSA Interclean. And uh, we're running a few minutes behind on content, so what I'd like you to do at this point is think about what your question might be. Type your question into the uh, white box, press send, and we're gonna come back in about uh, 10, 12 to 13 minutes and address all of the questions. Okay, so uh, my background, as I mentioned, I've been working uh, with Interclean now for a long time. I work with about every show in every industry you can think of. Uh, I'm a total trade show student. Um, I'm also a practitioner, a teacher, author. And for me, a trade show was never a place to just kind of show up and fly the um, flag and scan some cards and hand out some tchotchkes and go home. It was always a place where I had to make a dollar do the work 10. So I've been on the hunt for how do you bring structure and process so you can create predictable, reliable, big time results from trade shows. Uh, that's pretty much the world I live in. And I'm proud to say of the companies I've worked with where we've done tracking, uh, we've been able to pull, now we're pushing about $800 million in results from shows. So if you ever have um, want to talk trade show productivity, feel free to reach out. There's my 800 number email or go to tradeshowturnaround.com. We've recently relaunched the uh, Trade Show Turnaround blog, which you can uh, access also. So let's jump in on the back end of this, and um, let me hit some real high points. I'm gonna talk about 10 things you've got to avoid, and I'm gonna talk about 10 keys that will help you as an exhibitor have an incredible show experience. Number one, failure to read the manual. Every headache, every hassle, every cost overrun usually comes something that was in your service manual that you did not pay attention to. Unrealistic expectations. This is a big show. Uh, there's a lot of attendees. There's also a lot of exhibitors. As Iris mentioned, they're pre-planning their agenda. Uh, and so you can't go into the show in a 10 by 10 booth and think, wow, I'm going to get like 700 leads. And I'm going to show you some formulas here on how to actually set reach but realistic goals for shows. Uh, number three is the failure to set goals. I would bet if I asked every exhibitor on this webinar, why are you exhibiting at ISSA Interclean, you would give me a reason. But here's the problem. Reasons aren't enough. You've got to convert them to outcomes, goals, back them up with a game plan. Number four, just showing up and hoping that the right people pass your booth and hoping they see your booth and stop. Um, in a show of this size and stature, you've got to pre-market your exhibit, okay? It's, it's really not a choice. It, it's a critical success factor. Number five, which is one of the reasons we'll be at Interclean, is um, you know we wanna make sure that your exhibit works. It's like a billboard on a freeway. It grabs attention. It quickly communicates what you do and why they should care. And there's about tw 21 things that we're going to look at at your overall exhibit. And be sure to look also at the standout exhibit report on the Exhibitor Resource Success Program page, because we've got examples of booths that Interclean that rock, which you can use as for ideas and inspiration. Give tremendous thought to how you're going to show, tell, present your product service. As Iris mentioned, this is a very hands-on group. Uh, that wants to see how your products work in a real world setting, the number one way they want to engage with an exhibit is through interactive presentation demonstrations. If you just throw a table across the front of your booth and throw some literature on there and sit down behind the table and hope people want to stop and look at it, you're probably going to have a bad show. 
Number eight, number seven, your, your people. Trade shows are about face and only your people can manage this part of it. So you gotta make sure you have enough people. You gotta make sure they're trained in how to function in the trade show environment. A bad booth staff can ruin a great show for your company. Number eight, tearing down before it closes. Not only can that get you uninvited back to the next interclean, but at the end of the day, it's disrespectful to fellow exhibitors. And what I've noticed in my 30 years on show floors, sometimes that the best buyers are on the show floor late in the day and toward the back end of the show. Keep your exhibit open during every open exhibit hour. Number nine, little or no lead follow-up, getting the leads and being slow to move on them. And number 10, lack of time perspective in how you evaluate the results you're getting from a show. So this might be a good moment for you to take a look at these mistakes and ask yourself, are any of these mistakes part of your standard operating procedure now? If they're not, if, right, if they are, got to eliminate them if you're going to succeed, not just at Interclean, honestly, but at any show you ever do. All right, so let's get into our 10 keys here. Number one, get crystal clear about what you're really buying. Trade shows are about face and trade shows are about next. So your ultimate results are going to come from how well you put your company identity, people, products, and your services face-to-face -face with the right people to exchange ideas and information. And here's the key part, get the visitor to commit to a clear next action. People get caught up, you know, when I ask them, you know, hey, when you fill out the contract, what are you, what are you buying? They say concrete, real estate, floor space, opportunity, visibility, awareness. Yeah, you are buying all those things, but the magic power of trade shows is the power of face. Trade shows are about face, okay? That being said, you do not have an unlimited amount of capacity. I want you to calculate your exhibit interaction capacity. Grab your pen, grab your calculator, let's do this right now. Okay, Interclean has 19 and a half exhibiting hours. Question, how many booth staffers will be in your booth for those 19 and a half hours to talk to visitors? In my example, three. You'll notice toward the bottom, the staffing rule of thumb here is floor space, um, no, I'm sorry, it's 50 square feet per staffer. So if you're in a 10 by 10 booth, you got space for two, maybe three. So write your number down, multiply the two, you have your total staff hours. Now, listen carefully. I want you to pick a target number of interactions per hour per staffer. Three, conservative, four, moderate, five, aggressive. Pick one of those numbers and multiply together and you have the most important number you will ever understand about exhibiting. It is your exhibit interaction capacity. This is where your ultimate results will come from. Now, ISSA Interclean does an amazing job. Iris showed you the way they break down the demographics of the types of attendees and product interest and job functions and titles. So what you gotta do is create a profile of who your ideal visitor is and do a targeted pre-show campaign to get in their mind on their agenda. And you can see by the formula here, you know, it doesn't matter if the show has 5,000, 15,000 or 20,000 attendees. You only have the capacity in this example to interact with 176, 293. So for you, who are the right people? How much is enough right here? What are you going to do before you show up to get in their mind and on their agenda? Number two, second key. I talked about this one earlier. Reasons are not enough. You've got to move from reasons to goals. We use the SMART goal acronym. and You've got to back up your SMART goal with a written action plan. And we've given you some really powerful tools from the define your outcomes exercises and the trade show planning and management tool, which is a, will actually break the show down into 16 weeks and make sure you're doing the right things at the right time frames to grab both of these tools off the exhibitor success page. Number three, make sure you're investing enough. The budgeting rule of thumb is 
floor space times three minimally to set a total show budget. If you have a lot of competition and this is the perfect show for you, I recommend floor space times five. Now, look at the bottom of the screen. We've got another killer tool for you. It's called the Exhibit Cost Control Calculator. You'll be able to download this tool, customize it as you see fit, enter all of your money, know exactly where it went, benchmark it, and pick up a bunch of practices on how to save money. So make sure you're investing enough resources. Number four, we've talked about this one, in the mind, on the agenda of enough. Okay, what's great about Interclean that Iris pointed out in the average B2B trade show, the, they only spend and use as many media as you can, okay? You've also got to come up with your value proposition. You can't just say, hey, going to Interclean, visit booth 2484, delete, right? They're not gonna read that. So here's a, 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 a template for building your value proposition. What problems do you solve? Dangle them, hey, tired of this, worried about this, struggling with this, frustrated with that, or present an opportunity interested in, curious about, want to learn about, you could go from both angles, problem and opportunity. Give us five minutes. ISSA Interclean booth number. You'll see, do, learn. Oh, by the way, you'll get. That is the messaging that you're on the hunt for. When you find your value proposition, all you have to do is deliver it through as many channels as you can and the right attendees will come running to your booth. So give this, this thought, get your team together and get to work on this. Number five, we talked about your exhibit. Make sure it not only looks professional, but it grabs attention, right? And it supports your company's brand identity. There's three questions in an attendee's mind as they walk up and down an exhibit hall. Here they are. What, why, and who? What do you do? Why should I care? Who are you? Step outside of your exhibit now and look at it and make sure it answers these questions. Because if it doesn't, they're going to pass right by. Also, do not block entrance. If you're in a small inline booth and you have too much stuff in your booth, they can't get in. If you throw a table across the front, they can't enter. These are big mistakes that are going to limit. Also, make it easy to get out of your booth. Okay, and make sure, as we've mentioned over and over and over, there is something for them to do in your booth. I can summarize an effective booth in five words. Write these down, ready? Look, what, why, who, do. Let me say that again. Look, what, why, who, do. There you go, that's the key. Some of the things that will make an exhibit more visible is lighting, powerful imagery, clear and informative messaging, creative use of audio visual, AV in the booth, something physically to do, and a proactive booth staff. All of these things will make your exhibit get seen because if they don't see your exhibit, they're not gonna stop. And you might think that they, um, um, you know, kind of see, right, every booth they pass. They don't. They probably don't even notice seven out of 10 that they pass. So you got to leave nothing to chance when you design your booth. Let's talk about your people in our sixth key here. Okay, make sure you've got enough people. Remember our rule of thumb, 50 square feet per staffing. Friendly, engaging, proactive. Don't wait for the attendees to look. Stand up, put a smile on your face, and greet people. 
If you only do that, you'll get more people looking. Make sure they n know their stuff. Make sure they know what questions they should be asking. Make sure they have the ability to communicate your company and product messaging concisely. And make sure they realize that the outcome of an interaction is a commitment to the next step. As far as work in the booth, never leave your booth empty for one minute when, it, when the show is open. Uh, the most powerful attendee in the show might pass. If nobody's in your booth, they're passing right on by. Stand, smile, and greet, right? Your company story, all of the things we talked about a moment ago, these power tips, make sure you share these with your team. Your people are going to make or break your exhibit. Number seven, leads, okay? The quality of a lead is really equal to how clear the next step is and did the visitor agree to take that next step? Okay, so I strongly suggest uh, you take a look at the lead retrieval system and you not only uh, rent it, but you customize it. Sometimes companies will augment their um, program with a paper form just as a way to get more information and then they'll come back and they'll enter the data into the lead capture system afterwards. You can see a sample form on the screen here. Follow up fast. One of the beauties of electronic lead capture today is the ability to upload your uh, literature and send email right while you're standing with the visitor. Be sure to link your follow-up back to their request. And, and as you build your follow-up plan, use multiple media. Don't just email, 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 right? And finally, key point on your lead management. Th think this through before the show. Do not wait back until you get back from the show to ask, what are we going to do with all these leads? That will kill the value of leads for you. Number eight, what gets measured gets done. I know you're going to know what you spent, but what I really want you counting is your results over time. Okay, think about your goals and assess the progress that you made. This exhibit cost control tool is going to help you track where your dollar went. Okay, and the exhibiting performance tool that is on the success page is going to help you run some formulas even beyond what I'm going to show you here. At a bare bones minimum, every single exhibitor should be running these four formulas. So let's do them. Cost per lead, simple formula. Take your total show investment, floor space times three, remember that? Divide it by the number of leads you captured, and there you go, $88. Compare this to the average cost of a trade show lead at 283 and compare it to the value of a customer or your average sale amount. You would also tell your sales dealer distributors you're giving leads to what you paid for a lead so they value them more. Number two, cost per interaction, easy formula. Divide your total show investment by the number of interactions and look at this, $44 put your company identity, your products, your staff in front of a potential buyer. Average cost of a field sales call, $596. Wow, what a difference. Okay, next. Some of you are in marketing and you give leads to independent reps, dealers, distributors. Maybe you have a long, complex sales cycle. You're never going to be able to close the loop. Here's a great metric for you to run. The potential revenue value of your leads. So let's say that you captured 40 leads, but only 10 of them were A leads. And let's say that the average sale amount for your company is $5,000. Therefore, you generated $50,000 of A-level potential lead revenue value for your company. Divide it by your total show investment of $8,800, and look at this. Every dollar in generated $5.70 of potential revenue for your company. Soft dollar. Hard dollar is the ultimate formula. At some point in time, three months, six months, nine months after the show, you're going to want to look back, which is why you've got to have a closed loop system. Let's say that you're able to trace $45,000 in revenue back to the show. You back out your exhibiting investment of $8,800 and your top line exhibiting return on investment, 36,000. Divide that by your show investment and look at this. $1 in generated $4.09 of real revenue 
for your company. These are financial and performance metrics that every exhibitor can and should be running. Amazingly, very few do. Number nine, stay committed. Keep learning. You're here today. Keep learning. Keep growing. Things are changing, right? So try to have enough staff so you can get out of the booth and walk the show floor. And look around. We help you with this with the standout exhibit report we do, but you get out of there too. Don't live every hour. Make sure you got staffing, but get out in the hall. If you can attend the educational sessions or somebody, get in them. Be where the buyers, the the customers are. Attend the social networking events. I'm amazed at how many companies go exhibit, then they have dinner together, you know, the company staff, and they go back to their hotel room. Be where the buyers are. Put together a simple post-show report so you can grab the, the lessons. You should be getting better and better and better at every show you do. Okay, and finally, be patient. It takes time. If you will continue to learn, if you'll apply what you learned, and you stay committed to reaping power of trade shows, you will succeed. Okay, so let's wind this down. Okay, we've covered a lot and we're running a few minutes over here. You've, you've got the opportunity here. ISSA Interclean is absolutely one of your most effective media if you do it properly. You've got a tremendous partner with ISSA and the sales and the exhibitor service team. Iris, Michael, everybody's here to help you succeed. How successful do you want to be? Let's work together and make it happen. Finally, it's not what you heard in this briefing. It's going to be what you do. Okay, so use what you learned. Download the tools. Do the exercises. Follow the game plan that's laid out for you on the Exhibitor Success Program, and you will succeed. Okay, there's the link to the success program. So I'm going to open it up for questions, and while I do, I'm going to toss it back to Iris for any closing thoughts or questions, for, thoughts from ISSA. Iris? Thanks, Jefferson. Uh, obviously, we've learned a lot today. Um, all the tools that Jefferson mentioned, super helpful and important to review that before you get to the show um, for your experience to be successful. And we here are um, dedicated to helping you have this successful um, experience. And therefore, you can email us, you can call us um, as many times a day or as, you know, as often as you want. Um, we're, we're here for you. And, um, and there's one thing that we have not mentioned yet, but we do have a guest program for exhibitors. Um, it's going to be launched in July, so stay tuned for that. And that's basically a tool for exhibitors to use to invite current customers or prospects to attend the show for free. So um, we will announce that mid-July, and it's going to be available through the exhibitor portal. So stay tuned. But otherwise, thank you so much for investing your time today in the webinar, and we will have another webinar coming up in July 27th. Okay, Iris, I've got a few questions. They look like they might be in your wheelhouse. So here's the first question. Are there badge scanners that we can rent? And if so, what is the cost? So the lead retrieval form is going to be in the exhibitor service manual. And there's various options. Um, you've got uh, handheld options as well as an app that you can download to your uh, phone. Um, as far as pricing, uh, we'll have that available for you. I'm going to find out. It, it's likely going to be towards the end of this week, but I will let everyone on this call know exactly when it's going to be available in the service manual. Okay. You got another question with yeah. regard to uh, uh, booth staffers and badges. Um, yeah. Is everyone that we submit on our booth space application, are they automatically registered? Do we get a badge? You know, we'll, so that's we'll, a, we, that, yeah. absolutely. I, I know where we're going with that. Um, great question. Uh, anyone you placed um, or inputted into the uh, online application, that those people are not automatically registered with a Booth staff badge. You would have to go into your portal and actually register those individuals by July 31st to use your complimentary badges. And then afterwards, it's fifty dollars per person after you've used up those badges. Okay, and I'm sorry. How many complimentary badges do they receive? 
So for every 100 square feet that you reserve, you get one complimentary badge and you also get one for being an ISSA member. Okay. That information is going to be in the uh, registration portal, registration dashboard, and it's going to tell you how many are allotted and how many are used. And so okay. once you hit the number of used, then again, it'll um, start uh, charging you. Okay, thank you. Here's another question there. Um, is it possible to download a sortable list of reps? Manufacturer reps. So as far, we do have the option this year for exhibitors to purchase a list of manufacturer reps um, through the registration company, and that's going to be on that lead retrieval information or lead retrieval form. Um, it's 30 cents per name, and then those are the, those are the individuals who are registered. Now, as an ISSA member, you can go into our buyer's guide on our website, and you can actually look up all of our member manufacturer reps, and you can um, view all of their information um, on, on our website. And those are there are individuals um, uh, located on our website. Those are the pri basically the primary contacts from the company. Um, and the easy way of getting there is issa.com forward slash directory. Okay, thanks. Uh, let me see. I've got another one here. Um, how are uh, electric costs calculated for a booth, or what does uh, electricity cost for a booth? Uh, that is also a great question. It is in your service manual. So once you get into the service manual, um, there's a menu item, um, a list of menu items on the left side, and you're going to go to the section called utilities. Okay, thank you. I've got another one. This is a little specific to a um, um, the birdie sponsor. For the unlimited birdie sponsors, can we have our landing page URL in the banner? Wait, uh, say that one more time. For the unlimited birdie sponsors, can we have our oh. landing page URL in the banner? Um, I believe so. If you reach out to me by email, I can work with you directly on that. Okay, thank you. Another one is, what is the manufacturer's rep event? Um, the manufacturer reps event, um, that is going to take place on Wednesday, September 13th at the Bellagio. I believe it's at 630. And that's when um, it's a reception where um, we're giving out the manufacturer distinguished, uh, the manufacturer's rep distinguished rep award. And that I believe it's at 630 at the Bellagio. Uh, we just put information about uh, sponsoring the event on our website at issa.com slash sponsorships. So if you go to that and you go to events, you'll see um, more details about the manufacturer event networking um, event at the Bellagio. Okay, thank you, Iris. Uh, take a look yeah. in your uh, chat queue. I sent you a question. Uh, I want you to know if just reply back. Let me know if you want to address that here or personally after the event. Uh, yeah. And, and while you're looking at that, I'll I'll address this next question. Isn't the yeah. profit from sales versus the cost of the trade show a better metric? Yeah. Um, the formula that I showed you for measuring ROI was top line revenue. To keep it simple, that is the formula I'm presenting here. You can also use gross margin. So if you were to take your total revenue, you can trace back to the show and first back out your uh, cost of sales first. Now that will give you gross margin. Then back out your cost of exhibiting. You can get to true exhibiting ROI. Um, the the financial performance metric tool we talked about, which is on the uh, exhibitor success page, has these formulas built into it. It's a downloadable tool. And uh, now sometimes when companies can't close the loop on their leads, they have a long sales cycle, they sell through dealers, reps, or distributors who don't report what became of the lead, then they have to use, excuse me, uh, cost-based metrics to try to assess the value they're getting. So I hope that answered that question.
Uh, and I'm not seeing any, uh, any other questions. So, uh, Iris, anything else on your part before we uh, wind down our new exhibitor web briefing here? Sure. If, if there's any company that is interested in moving to the new exhibitor pavilion or the first time exhibitor pavilion, we do have um, one 10 by 10 available. Um, so, you can just contact me directly. One available. So, the person who asked the question, is it possible to move to that new exhibitor pavilion? Move fast. All right, well, on behalf of Iris, Michael, Kim, Mandy, and the entire team at ISSA, on my behalf here, Jefferson at Competitive Edge, we are so excited to have you as new exhibitors with us. We view this as a long-term partnership relationship. Uh, we see it as our job is to help you achieve what you want to be. And with that, we thank you so much for logging in. We thank you for being an exhibitor. Uh, mark your calendar for July 20. 7th for the uh, Exhibitor Services webinar. Use all of the content on the success program, and we will see you sooner rather than later at ISSA Interclean in Las Vegas. So have a great rest of your day, and thanks for logging in, everybody.